Okay, now we've opened up uh, Windows Movie Maker and we're going to take a look at the workflow here. Workflow is really just kind of a, a fancy word for the setup or the, uh, the layout of the program, the way it appears on the screen here. So we'll take a look at what we have. So once I've opened up the screen, I see that there are four different panels here that we're going to pay attention to. Uh, the first panel right over here is the um, the tasks pane. Now this in this pane right here you're going to find a lot of everything that you're going to need to build your movie. Uh, in this middle panel here this is where all of your video assets and also audio assets are going to be located. Uh, when you import a video or when you um, uh, capture a video from a video device it will break it up into clips and those clips will be found here. Also any music or pictures that you import will be found here as well. Okay and over here to the right of that is your the monitor. Uh, in the monitor here you, you'll be able to look at any of the assets that you've imported or captured and you'll also see the final uh, edited video that you've created as well here. Now down below this is where you'll find the um, the timeline. This is going to be very important, which we'll see a little bit later. Uh, there are two different views of the timeline. You have this, which is the timeline view, and also, if you click right here, it will give you this view, which is called the storyboard view. Okay, so that's the basic workflow of Windows Movie Maker. Okay, now the first thing you want to do with Movie Maker is get your video files um, onto the computer. So there are a couple different ways you can do this. What we're going to do is we're going to look over at the Movie Tasks pane and we're going to look at Capture Video. And the first option is to capture from video device. So once you've got your camera plugged in, uh, you can click there. Okay, now this window pops up and it's the um, video capture wizard and next to it it will say the name of the device you have plugged in and you want to name your file. Now you always want to name your file something that you'll remember. And I'm going to browse for a place to find it and I want to make sure I know where I'm going to find this. So I have this ready test folder set up on one of my hard drives. So I will save it in there. And then I'm going to click down here on the Next button. And that brings up the second part of the Video Capture Wizard where it asks you um, how you want to save the video, what settings you want for the video. Um, you should always capture your video in the AVI format. It's the most widely accepted format and you don't lose any video quality with it. So it's a good idea to always stick with the AVI format. So I'm going to click on Digital Device Format, AVI, and I'm going to click Next. Now here I am with a Capture Method screen. Now there are two choices, Capture the entire tape automatically or Capture Parts of the Tape manually. Um, I always choose the Capture Parts of the Tape manually. It, it just uh, it gives you a little more control over what you're capturing. So I'll click Next again. Okay, this next screen is the Capture Video screen. Uh, this is where you'll actually start capturing your video. You'll notice down here you have the camera controls. Now by clicking these buttons you'll actually control the camera itself. Uh, just below the camera controls it tells the tape position so it's a good idea if you know exactly where on the tape their footage is you can just follow that. Um, now down at the bottom left corner here it's got three choices here create clips when wizard finishes, mute speakers and capture time limit. Um, I usually leave the mute speakers and capture time limit off and I check off the create clips when wizard finishes. This way if you have a long piece of video it'll actually break it up into shorter clips which are sometimes easier to work with. Okay so once I've got the
cape where I want it. I go up to step one here where it says start capture and I click that. And you'll notice just below the choices of start capture and stop capture it will show you exactly how much you have captured here where it says video captured and it will also tell you the size of the file that has been created by it. Okay once you've got enough video captured you click on stop capture okay now I'm gonna click on the finish button and it's gonna import the files and break that video clip into several different clips and now I'm back on the main movie maker screen here another thing you can do is you can actually import videos that have already been captured to your computer the simple way to do that is uh, in the movie tasks pane underneath capture video the second choice is import video just click on that and you'll get an import file screen that comes up find the video file that you want to import you click on that and you click import Now you notice once that's finished that it has actually broken that video clip into separate clips as well. It is kind of nice. It does make it a little easier to work with when you have really large files. Another choice that's given to you underneath the capture video section of the uh, movie tasks pane is to import pictures. Now again it works the same way. You just click on import pictures. You get an import file dialog box click on the pictures you want to import and click import and those are now part of your collections and the final choice under capture video is to import audio or music and that again works the same way click on import audio or music find the music you want to import highlight it and click import. Now that is an, another one of your assets there for your using. So that's really basically how you get all your files into Windows Movie Maker.